Women who eat more dairy products are more prone to conceiving twins. Also women who are tall are likely to have twins. In a mother's womb, twins interact with each other through touch. The interesting thing is during such kinematic interaction, the twins make distinct gestures towards each other and were as gentle to the other twins delicate areas like eyes as they were when they touched their own. After birth, till they speak out their local language, they undergo a process called cryptophagia. Cryptophagia is the phenomena developed by newly born babies for interaction. Here they speak or interact through special autonomous languages which can only be understood by them. This phenomena is mostly seen in twin babies. Well, that's some good facts. But how would it be if Earth had a twin? To be more precise, what happens if Earth had an identical close twin? After the successful launch of Hubble Space Telescope, the search for exoplanets has become a daily job, especially the search for Earth-like planets. 51 Pegasi b was the first discovered exoplanet, located at a distance of 50 light years from Earth in the constellation of Pegasus orbiting a sun-like star named 51 Pegasi. As of 1st August 2017, there are a total of 3639 confirmed exoplanets, out of which 52 are potentially habitable. But all these planets are out of reach. A space travel towards these planets would take years even if we travel at the speed of light. So instead of looking for something remote, let's look somewhere within our reach, somewhere within our solar system. On one hand, we have Venus, a yellowish planet 5% smaller in radius and 15% smaller in mass, having twice the amount of radiation compared to Earth with a crushing atmosphere tinged with sulfuric acid clouds dominated by carbon dioxide. On the other hand, we have Mars, a red planet half the size of Earth with a very cold desert. These planets don't have all qualities to match Earth, but still some believe that they were once habitable. Though these planets don't have habitable specifications, still there is a method called terraforming to make them habitable. Terraforming is the process of deliberately modifying a non-habitable planet into Earth-like habitable one by changing its atmosphere, temperature, topography, and ecology. In the journal Science, Carl Sagan published a proposal of planetary engineering of Venus. In that, Sagan imagined seeding the atmosphere of Venus with algae, which would convert water, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide into organic compounds. As this process removed carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, the greenhouse effect will be reduced until the surface temperature dropped to the comfortable levels. The resulting carbon would be destroyed by high surface temperatures of Venus and would be isolated in the form of graphite or some volatile form of carbon on the surface of the planet. Though his theory had some cons, where the terraforming process would short circuit due to high atmospheric pressures, still it's a good science thought. Also, there are many possibilities of terraforming Mars too. Compared to Venus, Mars is easy to terraform. The only common problem with both the planets is they lack magnetic field around them like Earth to protect us from disease-causing rays from Sun. These deliberate modifications can one day be possible. The Earth had been modified by humans from Stone Age. If we can modify Earth into Hell, then we can definitely modify a non-Earth into Habitable One too. Now as a thought experiment. Let's consider that instead of moon, there existed an Earth-like habitable planet. To be more precise, let's assume that it's an Earth's identical twin. Still with a common origin and birth date, the probability of similar evolution like Earth life cannot be 100% in that planet. Let's suppose that both planets had intelligent life forms. If that were the case, it would be a matter of who had the ability to transport themselves to the sister planet first. Humans have the tendency to rage war, even for no reason. If we had the ability of space war, then we would first exterminate the other life so that there is less risk of interference. Or it could happen the other way too. One of the reasons behind our past searches for earthly planets is fear. Earthly beings don't have any technologies for making a space war. Instead, we do it within ourselves. In 2009, the fear arose to the maximum as a result 
25,880 messages from 190 different countries were sent to an Earth-like planet called Glizzy 581c orbiting a red star named Glizzy 581, probably messages begging them not to invade us. Suppose if the extraterrestrial beings are technologically underdeveloped, then we would have a new home. But instead of searching for new homes, let's try to save the existing one.